Now that we have our refrigeration cycle down, let's add some more components to it. We're going to add some basic components. When we get to refrigeration, we're going to add many more, but this helps you get the understanding the idea down. So we're going to start with a suction line accumulator. Most people just call it a accumulator, but I want you thinking of it as a suction line accumulator because that's the real name and it helps you think of where it's located. If you take an EPA test or you're talking to people and you know that it's a suction line, it helps you from getting confused. So if we look at the name of this guy right here, this particular brand, uh, but it's a refrigerant suction line accumulator. So the suction line accumulator is going to have an in and also an out on it. So we're going to draw what this is going to look like on our refrigeration cycle. So the suction line accumulator, something like this, and it's going to be in series to the suction line. So what we're going to do with this suction line accumulator is we're going to bring it in here and it's just going to drop down. The idea is it's going to accumulate any liquid refrigerant to protect the compressor. So if there's any liquid refrigerant, the idea is liquid refrigerant will be heavier than vapor refrigerant. That new law, they pass gravity. And what we're going to do is have that liquid refrigerant drop over here to the very, very bottom. The vapor will be at the top. The next pipe is the out pipe, and it's going to come down and then circle back up over here like so. This one usually drops down a little bit farther. So the idea behind this, liquid refrigerant is going to fall down here to the bottom, if there is any. Hopefully there shouldn't be, but if there is any, it's going to fall down to the bottom. And then the vapor side, we're pulling the vapor from the very, very top around and to the compressor. These are very common with things like heat pumps or systems that are designed to work with a very low amount of superheat or a potential for a low amount of superheat. Some refrigeration systems will have this to make sure they protect it. Some of the older units used to have this as well. One of the problems you'll have with these is because they're made of steel, they will rust out at the very bottom. So if you have an accumulator in a system, you have a refrigerant leak, that's one of the important places to check. So the next thing let's talk about is why is this tube coming down into the bottom? So let's take a look at what that looks like on a better than my drawing. So here's our suction line accumulator. This is the in port and this is the out port. So the in port, if we look in here, it doesn't go anywhere. So here if we look at that in port, It doesn't really go anywhere. It just comes out of the side right here, and then it falls, allows the refrigerant to fall straight down into the bottom. So it comes at this port here, and then the refrigerant will fall straight down here to the bottom. Now when it comes out, we're pulling vapor from the very top. So right here is where that vapor is coming from. This will be pulling, but also notice how it pulls it all the way down to the very bottom, and then we before we come back out. So the question is, if we only need vapor, why are we pulling it all the way down to the bottom? Well, an important aspect of it is, see, there's that little disc looking thing on it. Well, this particular model has a little screen on there, and that's really a hole right there. And that hole is very, very important. The idea is we're also going to end up with oil down here as well. And we'll make sure we get the oil back to the compressor. Oil return and refrigeration is very, very important. So the idea is it's an orifice. It's a very small hole. And that small hole right here pulls in any amount of oil and the oil pulls in and we may end up getting a little bit of liquid refrigerant there but the idea is that such a small amount coming through that fixed hole it has time to get to that compressor uh, to vaporize before it actually gets in the compressor so it helps protect the compressor so if you imagine this is full of liquid right here we're still pulling vapor off and just little droplets mainly oil uh, oil is going to be at the very bottom but we're not getting very much liquid refrigerant air. So it's a very important aspect of it. They do rust out. Uh, heat pumps very popular. Some of the older AC systems had them. Another issue we got to look at with these is a burnout. So if we have our compressor, which has an electric motor inside, we end up with a burnout where it actually burns out into the system. Uh, or we have an acid situation where there's acid in the system. Somebody didn't pull a good vacuum, uh, somebody left moisture in there, whatever the term is, and we end up with acid in there, we cannot flush these out. That acid gets in here, the burnout stuff gets in here, and what happens, it sits in there. You put a new compressor in, and it pulls this contaminated oil right through. So there's no way to flush these things out, unfortunately. So if you're having to replace the compressor because of a burnout, you're gonna to have to also replace your selection accumulator. Now, if you check the oil, do an acid test kit, oil's good, the oil's not burnt, then you're probably gonna be just fine and you can leave this. But if you have a burnout, need to replace this. I had a customer come to me 
a new customer and she was upset because she'd already been to two different AC companies. They had been replacing the compressors every year and she was really frustrated having to replace these compressors. Remember these compressors are murdered, they don't just die. So what we found out was initially there was a burnout. They replaced the compressor and they left this suction line accumulator in there. So every time they kept putting a new compressor in, this old oil was going through and trashing the whole system. So what we did is we pulled the compressor out, we flushed the condenser separately, flushed the liquid line separately, flush the evaporator separately, flush the suction line separately, put in a new suction line accumulator, a new compressor, never had another problem with that. And not just assuming that she didn't call me, we actively reached out to her and asked her, hey, how's your system working? Happy as can be. So the whole refrigeration cycle is important. Something like this, adding to that cycle, it's important to understand what it does, how it works, and when it doesn't work, such as a burnout. So very simple process, very uh, common part, suction line accumulator protects the compressor from any potential liquid refrigerant. All right, suction line accumulators are also associated with a rotary compressor. We're gonna talk about these compressors a little, a little bit, but this is a different style suction line accumulator. The suction line comes in at the top and it comes out at the bottom. Uh, it's a little different design, but the theory works the same. At the very top, there's a plate and that plate distributes refrigerant all the way around that tube. That tube, this this tube runs all the way up to the very top and it should be centered all the times I've moved around the country it get, got damaged but the idea is the same that liquid refrigerant falls on the outside edges and builds up down here at the very bottom we're pulling the vapor off the very top of that tube so that we only get vapor refrigerant coming into our compressor and I haven't cut this one around all the way or not but there should be I probably destroyed it when I was cutting it also a little orifice in here to allow any oil return but this is also a suction line accumulator. Quick comparison of the suction line accumulator. This is what you see typically with a rotary compressor. It isn't with series. The line comes into the accumulator, out of the accumulator to the compressor. But if we take a look on the inside, this is what we're looking like. So it seems pretty simple, but there's some key important facts. We have the refrigerant coming in at the very top here, and then we have this screen right here. This screen is really, really important because it helps also filter the, material, the refrigerant. So if any large components get in, it stops it here. Then we have these really cool deflectors right here. And these deflectors are going to be diverting the refrigerant to the sides. So if refrigerant's diverted to the sides, the refrigerant falls down to the bottom. The liquid refrigerant does. The vapor refrigerant's pulling into the tube at the very top. So we're keeping the refrigerant the heavy refrigerant diverted to the sides down to the bottom, and we're pulling only vapor through the very top side. So the vapor is going right through this tube and out to the bottom. So it's a very simple little concept. Now, one thing that's important about this, here where those arrows are, there's gonna be a little hole, and that hole is an orifice. And that orifice is very important because like we said earlier, it's going to be metering any liquid refrigerant that comes in, so it's a small acceptable amount, and mainly allowing the oil to be able to return back into the suction line because we don't want to fill this up with oil. So it allows a way to get the oil back into the system. So this is what you see typically with rotary compressors. Now we have the typical one we saw before with our two pipes at the top. So here's our inlet. And here is our outlet on this pipe here. So let's open this guy up and see a little better look. It's very similar to the other one we showed before. Here's where our pipe comes in. It's in series. It comes into and then out of over here. But where it comes in, we have this little deflector plate. So the refrigerant is deflected so the heavier liquid refrigerant falls to the bottom. We're picking up the vapor here. So the vapor refrigerant to the top, we pull the vapor through this tube around and back out and then continue on to the compressor. So if any liquid refrigerant, it's gonna to fall to the bottom. As that liquid boils off into a vapor, we're pulling only vapor. So it protects the compressor from any potential liquid. Now the reason the tube drops down to the bottom is so we can have a spot for this little round disc right here. So if we see that little round disc, it's a very important job. It's unfortunately on the back side but that little round disc right there is also has a screen and it's a place for an orifice. So again, if we have any liquid refrigerant, it can meter it through that small orifice, but primarily so we can get the oil returning back to the system. So that oil that built up in here gets pulled back into the system. So it's a very important aspect. Now, if we look at this one, it looks a little different in design, but it still works the same way. So if we take a look here, we have our pipe that comes into the suction line accumulator and out of the suction line accumulator. This would be called what we called 
piped in series into out of. So if we take a look on the tag, it calls it specifically a refrigerant suction line accumulator. It has our model number, it's designed for 300 PSI, and it's designed for all CFCs, HCFCs, and HFC refrigerants. So it works with any of the refrigerants, so designed for the higher pressure. And inside, it's very similar to the other ones that we've already seen. Here we have our refrigerant flows into the pipe here, and any of the heavier refrigerants will maybe hit the pipe or just simply fall down. So the liquid refrigerant's falling down to the bottom with gravity. The vapors are gonna be up here at the top, and we're sucking the vapor through this tube all the way at the bottom and then to the compressor. And if you notice how this tube is cut at a little angle right here, that's done by design. So any of the liquid that, or any of the refrigerant that's coming out, it hits the pipe and allows the liquid to drop down and the vapor to continue up. So it's very simple in design and it works really, really well. It's very effective. So they all work that same basic way. And you can see inside it's just raw metal. So there's nothing fancy about it at all. And some people ask, well, shouldn't it rust? Well, it's not gonna rust on the inside because to have rust, we have to have moisture and there should never be moisture in a refrigeration system. Now it can rust on the outside. Here we can see that there's some chips and flakes. What happens is the rust starts happening underneath the paint. See how the paint's starting to, to flake off here. Just like the cars do up north, maybe you've had a car that happened to, the rust gets under the paint and it starts rusting out. So it'll rust from the outside in. So on the places near the ocean, these will notoriously rust out and they can really rust out anywhere depending on humidity. And remember this is the suction line, so it's low temperature. So these are notoriously sweating or condensating. There's always moisture built up on these suction line accumulators. So that's why they don't install them unless they absolutely need them, such as heat pumps a lot of times or refrigeration where you have a low temperature. This one also has the hole at the very bottom. We can't see it very well, but that hole in the bottom down here is doing the same thing. It's a metering device and it allows for any of the oil to be pulled back into the system. And if liquid refrigerant starts pulling through, it's a small enough orifice or hole that allows for it to meter it. If we look into the very end of this, it's just simply a hollow tube. It's just a simple hollow tube, nothing fancy at all. Three different types of suction line accumulators all work the same way, protect the compressor from any potential liquid refrigerant.